And while what's being proposed here goes no further back into the garden, the fact is that the proposed development is two storey right into the garden and therefore visually overbearing. I do have a Google map image of the area if you don't uh, uh, <laughs> if you don't believe me, I suppose, um, that that's the shape of the property that's there. Um, also, I looked at the council's website and the plans that are there are not the ones, the revised ones, which are referred to in the report. Uh, but I'm assuming that that's not a significant change to the overall plan. So members, I just want to say to you that policy HS11 says house extensions will be permitted subject to the scale of the extension being appropriate to the size of the lot, not dominating the existing building as not so extensive as to be unneighbourly. And the National Planning Policy Framework says that you should always seek to secure high quality design and a good standard of amenity for all existing and future occupants of the land and buildings. I'm just suggesting to you that the proposal is own development which dominates the existing building and is so extensive as to be unneighbourly. Thank you. Thank you, Wendy. Essentially, the, the extension will come out along here, down here, wrap around. So all of this element will be two-storey, and then a single story here. So if we go back to the proposed, that's essentially what it is. So this is the this is the average of the extension here, two-storey along here, over the existing first-storey element, and then a uh, uh, ground floor element, and then steps down to single storey here. Essentially, if, if, this, uh, if the neighbour next door at 303, which is not the attached property, is the one next to it, if they were to do a similar extension, it would come out and it would mirror this. Um, so if you didn't have the first floor setback, the lower ridge, the lower ridge and the, uh, the hipped roof, then it would then read as a terrace. So those, those uh, two sets of semi-detached properties would look as a terrace at four. So by setting it back at the first floor level, having the hip roof and the lower ridge height, that avoids any terracing effect. Okay, there's no other comments. Uh, the officer's recommendation is to approve this subject to the condition listed. Is there a move up?
a single story side extension, the works are retrospective as the extension has already been built. The three objections received are from properties that found the application side to the rear. That's 13, 15, and 17 high yield present. So this one, this one, and this one. So it's three. Concerns from these properties have been raised about the proximity of the extension to their boundaries. However, there is an existing rear projection between these boundaries and the, and the extension, so it will not be any closer to the boundary than the existing dwelling. Comments relating to the extension exceeding half the width of the original property can only be uh, relevant for corner properties as set out in the supplementary plan of overstate for house extensions. This is not a corner plot, and the plot is more than sufficient to accommodate the extension and retain satisfactory garden space. As the extension is single story and having regard to boundary treatments, the extension will not impact on loss of light to neighbouring comfortable rooms, particularly given the separation distance is achieved. Similarly, the extension would not result in any noise intrusion. The development is considered acceptable uh, and is recommended for approval, there is no petition to this application. Well, we don't have any more council case for the Can I ask uh, the officer um, on the planning history for this site? September last year, a two story side extension was refused. Um, bearing in mind what you said in terms of the, the massing and the, the space within the property, why was the two story side extension refused and this one was accepted? Uh, to the chair, um, it wasn't set back at first of all, it didn't have a lower ridge, line, uh, a lower ridge height, um, and it, it moved significantly further um, forward in size towards the rear gardens on this side. So that was a two story extension. for item 14 and 15 are, are exactly the same. Um, but if I start with item 14, uh, the planning commission was granted for the erection of 10 dwellings on land adjacent to the rectory um, on Mark Lake in, in Rondo in February of this year. The permission was given following a site visit by members and was subject to a section 106 agreement for the provision of on-site affordable housing resulting in two at the time, policy relating to affordable housing provision required all schemes of five units or more to provide an element of affordable housing or to be able to demonstrate development was not viable if such provision was made. In May this year, the Court of Appeal ruled that the Secretary of State's direction that small-scale sites, i.e. any development of ten units or less, could not require the developer to provide affordable housing was not lawful was not unlawful, thereby overturning the High Court ruling for five units and above. Since the decision on this application has not been issued, as the developer has not yet entered into the Section 106 agreement, the Council must now determine this application in light of the Court of Appeal decision and having regard to the Secretary of State's directive that developments of less than 11, of less than 11 units cannot require affordable housing provision. Obviously, since the Court of Appeal decision, um, the applicants on both item 11 and uh, item 14 and item 15 have approached the council to say that they were intentionally 
So the council is left with the situation of um, removing the resolution of the requirement for the, the one to six agreement to allow the decision to now be issued. Um, all other aspects of the development remain unchanged and have been considered by the planning committee in February. All conditions as previously attached with that um, before the uh, members considered are all always put forward. So we are recommending that the committee now resolve to approve the application to enable the decision to be issued.
I said it to Jim. Um, I will. You know, I don't need. I don't need an agreement with you today. It's a good thing. It's a good thing. Issue on on our part. At the time when uh, it was uh, pointed out to him that our our policy or the policy was required, he didn't demur at that point. He didn't say, "Oh, I'm going to be able to make this stack up." I mean, I'm able to do what? Oh no, this stack up at the time and made profits. What's happening now is he's seen an opportunity to make more money and he's making it on the backs of people that you know, potentially could have uh, uh, taken the uh, This is what happens yesterday when you know, professional people stand up and make comments and it impacts on people on the ground. Perfectly capable, as a community like this is, of, of weighing in the balance. Just one advice of a well reservation money and the needs of the community of Chancellor. Uh, and it's sort of ridiculous. It's too far too much top down uh, to take it as uh, here. And I'm disappointed that you can have a better than the other place, the Conservative Control, but that they're not planning to appeal to the Supreme Court on, on the matter so that we can, you know, we can get a little localism back in this uh, in, in the planning system, certainly when it comes to the provision uh, of. I was only going to say, suggest, but uh, I dare say, uh, uh, Matthew's been in conversation with the developer that we could try and see, you know, a voluntary contribution of up to two uh, houses uh, from them. But the only other thing that's in my mind is, you know, I'm not sure I was on the committee, uh, I wasn't taking either. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> 